Well, the Tates and Pubs organization has been going undergoing some radical changes and expansion. We have people that walk in and want to know how much a tape is, how much a pamphlet is, and we don't tell them. The reason is because they are free, and the only basis for having any uh, overhead at all is contributions. Now, the reason for that is because this is not a business, this is a grace operation. And uh, we operate like a business in that we use approximately $60,000 a month, which puts us over a half million dollar a year business right now. At the rate we're expanding by the end of the year, we should be a million dollar business. But we're not in it for the money. We had uh, a man walk in the other day from RCA, and after he was shown around for a while and got to try to understand the policy as best he could, <laughs> and he was utterly amazed, and he finally walked out just shaking his head and said, if you all are in this for the profits, you can make so much money. <laughs> but the objective is to get out uh, to disseminate Bible doctrine. Now, we do get a lot of letters. In fact, we get hundreds of letters. In fact, people are constantly writing me letters, and I never answer them. And I'm sure that uh, I'm persona non grata all over the world, but it's impossible to answer these letters. Buddy takes up the slack and maybe gets 50 or 60 or 100 out a month. People, when they read one of these marriage pamphlets or when they uh, hear some uh, tape on right man, right woman, and apparently everyone has a problem. So we get literally thousands of letters, and they order sometimes, and they have problems sometimes. I thought this one was rather interesting because it came all the way from uh, Israeli. In fact, it has an Israeli stamp on it. But this man says, uh, Dear Mr. Thiem, I'm an Australian, an ordained minister of the Anglican Church, belonging to the evangelical school of thought within that church. Last year, the Lord laid it on my heart to sell my house, leave home, and come to this land in order to serve his people here. He's gone to Israel. During the last couple of weeks since arriving here from England, I have had some, of, uh, some time on my hands as I await the next stages of his leading. A friend has loaned me a copy of your book, The Faith Rest Life, which I found to be a very good comfort and a challenge at this time of adjustment in a new land. Subsequently, I was speaking with a young American from a missionary parents in South African General Mission who was on his way to train in Calvary Bible College. He was telling me something of the independent church movement in the States. I was most interested. He mentioned that you have a service of sermons on tape. I would be interested to know what books and tapes you now have available. There are a number of small groups here in Israel with whom it is possible to have fellowship, but occasionally... Um, but the occasional recorded message is very welcome. Could you please fur furnish full details of tapes and published works that you offer? I would also be interested to know if any of the American colleges or universities are able to offer postgraduate qualifications to those in overseas land, etc. Well, anyway, he is stating his interest, and he's an Israeli. Now, this one's from Addis Ababa. That's in Ethiopia. Uh, weak star, dear brother, theme. <laughs> the, most frequent the most frequent tangible encouragement that we experience is the weekly Baraka Bulletin. Week after week, we see our names listed and know that folks whom we have never met are entering into this work and it is... And this is a real source of blessing. We're thankful for Barak and the vital role they have in this ministry. Uh, he says, The Lord continues in his grace to bless the labor among the university college students in Addis Ababa. Even though times are becoming more uncertain, we are rejoicing that in the lives of some he's doing a work. And then he goes on to start explaining how he's using the tapes. And uh, he says, Last evening, this is one of his illustrations, Last evening, a young man, university graduate, serving as a pastor, and who is single, and myself, were engaged in a discussion regarding Christian marriage. It was fortunate that I had recently read your Christian view of love, sex, and marriage, for much of the advice given was from that book. Incidents like this occur a dozen times a month. And uh, then he goes on and says, uh, 
what he wants. He's ordering uh, the basic series, and he's ordering some books, Power of Prevailing Prayer, What is Spirituality, Sin of Worry, Prophecy of Tongues, Eternal Life, Mental Attitude, and so on. And uh, he says, once again, we thank you for the prayers and for all uh, that you do to enrich our ministry here in Ethiopia. And this is signed by uh, Bart Ferenstock. And I met originally out in California. Of course, I get this kind all the time. This could easily have been from a person in Baraka Church, but it's from Indiana. It says, Dear Bob, you don't know me. I've only seen you twice, and, and yet your voice echoes through the rooms of my house every day. You guessed it. I'm one of the Baraka's silent majority, a taper. Four years ago, while visiting with my cousin in Houston, I went along to a Bible class with her and her family, mainly out of curiosity. I might add, uh, see, we come from a very religious Baptist family. Revivals, walking the aisles, 30 verses of, oh, how I love Jesus, the whole bit. I was warned when I mentioned going to visit with this cousin that she was going to some weird church where they, di where they didn't tithe, shake hands, and give you a visitor's card or even have a church supper. And I could scarcely imagine how there could be enough people for a congregation. I thought I had accepted Jesus Christ years before this, but it was works, as I was to learn later mixed in with a lot of emotionalism. But that night I heard the real issue presented and accepted Jesus Christ by faith. Let me tell you, I can still remember every detail of that night and the week that followed because it was the beginning of the greatest thing in my life. We went to Bible class every night, and the more I heard, the more insatiable I became for doctrine. It was grace all the way and still is. We returned to Indiana. I yanked my kids out of Sunday school, Bible school, and haven't been back to church since. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that's, that's when my glasses need windshield wipers. Uh, uh, we have traveled a hundred miles one way trying to find a church that teaches Bible doctrine. Uh, we, uh, be be we believe there are none. I wanted to get started on tapes immediately, but financially. It seemed a tape recorder was out of the question. About that time, here comes one in the mail post, Mark Houston. And then she explains how she received it. Very wonderful grace opportunity there. I'm in the process of building an edification complex, and my six-year-old is so grace-oriented, it's fantastic. Of course, my two-and-a-half-year-old is still an unbeliever. But I leave him to the Lord and keep, uh, and keep uh, him protected from legalism. Needless to say, I went through a few rounds of being in the divine woodshed as a baby in doctrine because other things started coming first. The more I, build, the more I grow and build, the more pressure I get, uh, of course, but gap, daily in the, in the, uh, but gap daily is the only way, and I know God protects me from all of the maligning and hate. And uh, then she adds a few other things, and she mentions uh, some problems she's having. And she winds up saying, I'll have the privilege of uh, someday walking into Barack again and hearing the eyes of Texas rocking through the place. <laughs> then uh, here's one. This came from California. This is one of those uh, kind that we get all the time. May I ask a favor of you? I would like to obtain 20 copies of your little booklet, Christian at Ease, but I cannot afford to pay for them at this time. Like, we could care less. By the way, this order has been fulfilled. I can't afford to pay is something we hear very frequently. We're not even remotely interested in whether they can afford it or not. We do not distinguish between paying and non-paying customers. There were some records at one time that have been destroyed. This is a grace operation. Eventually, people are going to learn what grace is. Uh, reading this book it has encouraged and strengthened me in my faith so much that I would like to pass these booklets to some of the Christians who are in the same situation I am, that is, unemployed. Four months ago, I was laid off at Aerojet General Corporation and now find myself supporting a family, six children, and my wife, 
on $65 per week instead of $14,000 per year. Now, uh, this, could be a time, this could be a time of depression and desperation, but instead I have found real peace and assurance through reading God's Word and through the advice and comfort offered in your booklet. Strangely enough, I have found that other Christians really have no firm word of comfort to offer those going through a time of trial. Many folks at church have told me that they are praying for me, and I appreciate that, but aside from sympathy and prayer, there is no true understanding of the meaning of what has befallen me. Most folks, I imagine, believe that this must be some sort of punishment for wrongdoing, and I can't blame them for uh, that is just how I felt about those who were going through trials of the same type. But now I realize this is really a time of testing, a time of trying my faith and patience, a time for spiritual growth. This is tremendous insight. It is uh, too big to be kept to myself, and I must share it with others. That's why I would like to have some copies of your booklets, etc. Well, we just get hundreds of letters like this, but we haven't shared them before. Here's one that says, My daughter began listening to them a few months ago to young people's tapes before, before she became 13 years old. This was her own decision, and she likes for me to read her notes. She really liked the tape on regeneration. There are two other children, ages 11 and 12, who also of their own initiative listen to tapes. They show the effect of Bible doctrine in their lives. Last year, I was almost had ecstatics when I heard them refute evolution with the principles of the Scripture and doctrine of the human spirit. They were having their own discussion about animals and human beings. Uh, thanks to you for whetting my literature appetite, I'm enjoying Patton's War as I Know It, a biography of MacArthur, and Skimming Lee's Lieutenant, so he's a byproduct. <laughs> that one is from California. Now here's one from Colorado. Uh, this is from a very close friend of mine. Several weeks ago, we were in the San Juan Mountains of southwest Colorado, scouting a new area for wilderness camping. While preparing our supper over the campfire, we were listening to a tape. It was turned up pretty loud, so nothing could be missed as we moved around the area. Below our campsite, a fenced mountain meadow was dotted with white-faced Herefords grazing. Suddenly, we realized we were not alone in our attention to the word preached. The stock was lined up along the fence. <laughs> The stock was lined up along the fence, intently assimilating their evening BD, Bible doc. <laughs> I tell you, the positive volition here in Colorado is overwhelming. <laughs> now listen to this. Dear sir, I am interested in knowing more about your taste. I am over in Vietnam and uh, I want to spend my free time studying the Bible. I thought that you might have tapes or something else for me to use. If you can help me in any way, please let me know. And then he has his address written on a card here. And the interesting thing is it looks like he wrote this in the middle of a firefight. Now, here's one from uh, Virginia. This girl says, what her, I won't give you her name. My name is Barbara Blank. I'm a sophomore at Oral Roberts University. I accepted Christ as my Savior at the age of 12. Unfortunately, my church taught me very little doctrine. This lack of knowledge of the Word caused me to be very miserable as a Christian. I even suffered a nervous breakdown while still in high school. It wasn't until the summer before my freshman year of college that I started to really dig into the Bible. And then she tells that she attended uh, a couple of colleges. And uh, she met some chap, and he, she learned from him of the ministry, so we both got on the mailing list. And we began to apply basic doctrines of rebound and isolation of sin. Later, we began listening to your Bible study tapes. We both did some witnessing on campus, yet there is very little response. I can understand that. <laughs> this summer, the Lord has blessed me. I attended uh, a conference in Florida, then I returned to Virginia to share with my family and friends. I've had the opportunity to lead my college class at church, and she goes on to tell what the tapes are doing in this connection. Uh, here's one from Utah. Please send me the first of the series of the most recent tapes on Ephesians. If the 68 series is the most recent, send me that, and so on. We have never been happier than now that we are taking in doctrine. Uh, we have, however, never been under more pressure and see the need of stepping up our intake of doctrine. 
We have been listening and reviewing that which we have had in our possession, but feel as the warfare steps up, we must also advance. We want to move just as fast as we can with proper retention of truth. We are thankful for the grace of God which has, been, which has made possible the past studies. As he enables, we will send money when we can. You see this stuff about money. Now, frankly, uh, it's going to take more than $600,000 uh, a year to keep us in business. It takes money to operate over there. But uh, this idea that people have, that they don't have money, they can't have material. You know where they got it? From fundamentalist literature organizations. And when I say fundamentalists, I mean those who accept the fundamentals of Scripture, but apparently understand what it's all about. There's just one word that they may have in their vocabulary, but is missing in concept. That word is grace. Of course, you know how I feel about this thing. I think it's about time Baraka Church got in the business of making this its missionary arm. He goes on to say how refreshed we have been through the intake of doctrine. We were so legalistic, so ignorant, and so miserable. I am sure that we still have some way to go, but what a sample of grace we have had thus far. And this is written from Sandy, Utah. Believe me, that is some place, Sandy, Utah. Well, these go on and on and on and on and on. In fact, here's one that I should have read from Ghana because it has... Uh, an evangelist, a black evangelist from Ghana, a real fine uh, black chap, and he has a real good crew cut. You'd never take him for an American type of black man. He's definitely an African, and he doesn't have that African hairdo. He's got a crew cut, like all these people who get doctrine in Africa. And he says, what a, he says, greetings in the precious name of Jesus Christ. What a blessing it is for me and for all here all here in my ministry to have such a good brother and a friend as you and an author like you. He says, you have the light of the world, the salt of the earth, and we rejoice to have this privilege of your friendship, fellowship, and faith. May grace and peace of God Almighty be multiplied to you as my daily prayer for you. Now, this is black evangelist praying for me in Africa. The black evangelist has a crew cut, by the way. <laughs> I have received one of, uh, one of your more recent books on divine guidance. And the uh, paper will not permit me to comment on the book, but I can say without a shadow of contradiction that your ministry is founded on the Word of God. And then he goes on and tells me what he's doing in Ghana. And we are getting so many letters from Ghana, and if you're ever over in TNP, you ought to just see all those drawers from Ghana. Uh, this is really something. The stamp, this Ghana stamp, has a jackrabbit kicking like a mule. That's a new one. And uh, here's one from... Uh, Nigeria, similar type thing. But these, this is big. I'd never read this stuff before, and I'm starting to read it now because it just suddenly dawned on me that maybe some of you were as dumb as I was about uh, T and P. As time we all got over that hunt. Now listen, I've just read a couple of samples here. You multiply this by about ten thousand, and you get a better picture of what's going on in just a few weeks' time. But the thing that really chaps me. Is this idea that people think if we can't put some money in the pot, or we'll promise to do it. And I don't like that kind of stuff, because it isn't God's grace at all. When anyone gives to TNP, they ought to understand one thing. That gift, whether it's a small gift or a large gift, or an in-between gift, is a commemoration to God's grace. We are dependent on who and what he is for every part of the operation. And the grace of God is the only basis for this to operate. And that means that some can give nothing and some can give something. But when a person gives, he ought to remember we are saved by grace, we live by grace, we stand by grace, and why, therefore, should we be trying to charge money and hold up tapes and publications just because people don't have it? It's like... Uh, Who's running this outfit? God's grace or some business administration legalism? Now, I'm all for business being run on a profit basis when we are in business. In fact, if you're a believer in business, it's a part of your job to make a profit. 
a legitimate prophet. You do it as under the law. But if it happens to be Barack at church, it's a business without being a business. I mean, we have an overhead, and we're over a half million dollar business now. We're going to be more and more as time goes on. But we are not in it for the profit, and we are not in it to deprive the poor and those who are without funds. We are not in it to deprive them of God's Word. 